David uh, very appropriately chose uh, the hymn, My Surrender All, which is exactly what our beatitude is about today. Blessed are those uh, who hunger and thirst for all of God, for they shall be filled. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Uh, it's a good day to be alive. I commend all of you willing to get out on the roads today. I know they're somewhat snow covered and a little bit slick, but uh, it's great to have those of you that are here and those of you that have tuned in on Zoom and, and Facebook. We're honored to have you take some time to worship uh, with, with us. Uh, later in the uh, service, we'll be doing communion. So if you're at home, if you could uh, find some appropriate elements so that you could join us when we, when we do that. Uh, some support group options. Uh, Saturday, this coming Saturday, loss of spouse seminar at 10 a.m. Uh, Gail was in the first service and said there are seven people that have already signed up. Uh, and uh, uh, they may have to go to a, a larger room in order to social distance, but uh, it's great to, to be able to provide support for that, uh, for that group, and obviously there's room for, for more. A regular Grief Share uh, weekly support group begins on Wednesday, February 24th, every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. we have a divorce care support group. Next Sunday is uh, Valentine's Day, and we're going to have a very simple Valentine's Day drive-in service. So at 5 p.m., you drive into the parking lot. Uh, we will have, uh, depending on how cold it is, we'll see, we'll see how long we go. But uh, we're going to sing some old love songs um, and have a devotion on, on love. And then everyone who comes will get a box of Russell Stover's chocolate and a homemade uh, Valentine's Day card made by Rhonda Johnston. So... Um, Hope that you'll, uh, we'll bring them out to your cars, uh, so I hope you'll join us for that Valentine's Day drive-in next, uh, next Sunday. This Sunday, we begin a new ministry, and it's just simply the Emmanuel Prayer Ministry. Uh, most weeks, I'll have you mention you can call in during the announcement time. This week, um, I'm just going to, during the prayer time, I'll mention you can call. Uh, call the church number, and after my sermon, you can call. And the people, people that are watching, uh, if you call that number... There will be someone here that will take the call, and then you'll be directed to someone who will pray with you. Mid-service will be someone in their home that will pray wherever they are. They'll call you, and they'll call you back and pray with you. At the end of the service, there's uh, someone will actually be someone will actually be in the church here that will take the take the calls. But anyway, we've been bringing this together, and uh, we started today. So as I as I lead into the prayer time, I'm, I'll mention to you that are watching. If you need prayer, you can call that number, and someone. We'll pray with you. Uh, we had the orientation this week, and we really could use two more people to fill out the schedule. If you're willing either to pray here after this service with someone uh, or um, to, um, to, if you're at home and would pray, do that. I forgot about the, uh, the, our uh, opening slides. Uh, the videos or live feeds that follow uh, Facebook are not directed by us. And also, if for some reason, you lose the, if you lose the feed uh, as, as we are uh, going through the service, that will uh, come up on uh, Facebook, you, uh, I'm sorry, YouTube. We take this recorded service and we put it up on YouTube. So if you lose the feed during the morning and you want to go back and see the whole service, it, it, the whole service will be on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, February is Prayer Partner Month, and we're just hoping that you have a prayer partner. Uh, if you do, let us know, and then we'll kind of keep that, we'll keep a list of that. If you would like someone who for one year will commit to pray with you, for you, uh, the, the commitment is for one year to make one contact a month. Uh, oftentimes, it's more than that. And uh, follow, you know, just follow up somewhat, someone in prayer. Uh, just send me a note or call the office, and we'll get you linked up with uh, someone. We're collecting items for house to home, and you can see in our bulletin the things that we are needing. Uh, my Tuesday and Wednesday Bible studies, uh, there was an interest in Tuesday morning to look at world religions and how Christianity compares. So both Tuesday and Wednesday for a time are going to look at uh, how Christianity compares to Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, uh, and uh, some of the other beliefs like Mormonism and Jehovah Witness. We'll, we'll look at what they believe and, and how, how, we, how we differ and how we're, we're the same with some of those. Uh, Women's Care Center, Baby Bottle uh, Campaign, uh, we're raising some money for them. Um, marriage Course got off to a good start Friday. There's still room for some folks if you'd like to take it online. Um, there was a good, there were Five people, five people that uh, did, did the did the marriage course here at the church, and there were almost twelve. Um, 
four, four here and a preacher count. I was, I was adding uh, four here at the church and ten online took the marriage course, and it's uh, really is really is well well done, well worth uh, the time. I uh, I chose two two um, uh, praise songs to open with. The first one really relates to blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And this first one, this is the air I breathe, says, God, I desire you. You're literally the air that I breathe, and you're the, you're the food that sustains me. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily. share as this is communion sunday it's an old song called there is uh, a redeemer written by melody green a wife of keith green back you know uh, songs of the 70s keith green was pretty well known some of you know this song but it's a good song as we think about taking communion in just a moment Giving us 
us your Son, and leave in your spirit till the work on earth is done. Jesus, my Redeemer, name above all names, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, oh, for sinners slain. Thank you, oh, my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. And leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. And we're going to continue to praise him this morning as we sing hymn number 59 in your hymn books, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. I sing the mighty Lord, how thy 
Would you pray with me now? Lord, as we reflect upon your power and your glory and your majesty, Father, we, we can't help but worship you. Father, I pray that you would bathe us in your presence, bathe us in your spirit this morning, uh, and, and overwhelm us, Father, uh, uh, overflow within us to the point where we cannot help but worship you. I pray that you would captivate our thoughts and capture our hearts again. Refresh your spirit in us this morning. Be with us as we sing. Be with us as we study and, and hear. Uh, be with us as we fellowship. Be with those who can't be here in person. Be with those who, who are watching online, Father. We, we pray that you would, uh, you would magnify yourself, bring about your kingdom in our midst, uh, and work your will through our lives and through our worship. And now, Father, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, turn and wave to someone nearby. Happy birthday. That's right. Do we have any children, like actual, like chronological children? <laughs> that means age. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm sure there are lots of children watching at home, and you guys, you guys are all childlike in your faith, I'm sure. Um, <clears throat> I have a I have a visual aid. She's actually standing up there. Um, she's probably not very happy about me saying that. Um, but I want to tell you about my best friend. Um, now, I don't know if, about you, but if you're like me, I have best buddies, and then I have a best friend. And Pastor Jonathan is one of my best buddies. Uh, he and Keith were uh, Keith uh, Schoenhut. We're we're kind of a nerd group together. Uh, we're all excited. Thursday, we're going to watch King Kong at Keith's house because um, that's just us. But, um, but I have a best friend um, who is uh, my wife, Sarah. And, uh, it's, uh, and I have pictures I would, I would show you, but I didn't think far enough in advance to get them on the TV. Um, but that's her and me. Uh, I was a pirate and she was my winch. We were at a we were at a costume party, um, but I like to just look at pictures of her because they just make me smile. Um, but what's neat about having a best friend like her um, is um, several things. One, we always have someone who wants to do something with us. We always have someone to go places with and enjoy things with. And when, I know that when I'm away from her and I'm doing something and I'm enjoying it, I'm thinking, wow, Sarah would really like to do this. I'd, I'd like, I wish I could share this with her. Or when I get home, I'm going to tell Sarah this. Um, and I know that she feels the same way. But the thing that really makes her my best friend is that even when I am not nice to her, when I am not kind to her, she always forgives me. Um, but she's human. So when I hurt her feelings... She may forgive me, but her feelings are still hurt. She'll eventually get over it. Uh, like the other day, she was so excited. We got a new refrigerator. And uh, she was a little bit more excited about it than I was because, you know, it's a refrigerator. Um, it doesn't even have Bluetooth. Um, but um, she asked me several times, do, do you like the refrigerator? Do you like it? And after the, like the third or fourth time, I'm like, it's a refrigerator. <laughs> um, and I kind of squashed her a little bit. She was so excited, and I, I hurt her feelings. And a little bit later, I realized what I'd done, and I apologized to her. And she forgave me, but I could tell she was still sad. And um, I felt really bad about that. Um, and the reason I'm telling you this is that our real best friend 
is Jesus. And the Bible says that when we sin against God and we ask for forgiveness, it's as if the sin is as far away from us as the East is from the West. When we go back to him later and say something about that sin, God says, what sin? He doesn't, he doesn't have to dwell on it like we, like we do as human beings. So we always want to remember that that is an amazing gift of having forgiveness. Not only forgiveness, but our sin is forgotten. And that's something to be thankful for. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for the fact that you are our best friend and that you have given us the gift of grace and that we can come to you and confess our sin. And once we've done that, it's as if the sin had never happened. We, we are no longer held back by that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks. Sarah did actually call me this week and said she needed counseling for someone who had been very insensitive to her. I didn't really know what it was until just now, uh, but we'll get her. We'll get it worked out. Uh, 2020 was a year of losses. Um, we lost our routine. Uh, people, many people lost their jobs and their income, and uh, more people um, lost their sense of sanity and um, high anxiety and fear and all that. Um, and then the, the biggest, a huge loss was how many people lost loved ones um, and then were not able to, to be with them um, during both their, their illness and their, and their death. So I'm really grateful that Gail Samolaitis is uh, offering this Saturday a loss of spouse seminar and then coming up on Wednesday nights at 6, the, another grief share. So um, I, there's a um, video I showed at 8.30, but I, I didn't get a chance to... Well, um, Jan, you shared about grief share. And when, when I showed this video at 8.30, Jan Ashwell shared about how grief share had been meaningful uh, to her, but I wanted you to see uh, this is it's a longer uh, video, so I, I told Adam if he could have it start about two minutes. But it's a lady who was in a previous uh, grief share, and she uh, really thought it uh, was helpful. And uh, obviously, her voice is kind of low, Jerry, so you'll have to cr crank up the volume so we can hear it here. Hi. But then this year. Um, in 2000, well, sorry, not this year, in 2020, my mother passed away. So I lost my, both of my parents within about a year of each other. And so without that class, I don't think I would have had the tools that I needed to go through a second um, death in my you know, immediate family, not just immediate family, but a parent. Um, those, the class gave me so many tools to use and um, re just to being able to go back and even reflect in the book and see, um, you know, go back and look and see what I wrote and uh, being able to reflect on it and have even more revelation, it's just an awesome experience. And I, I'm so, I so wish and pray that the church um, would, dis would start talking about grief more. Um, I can honestly tell you that facing those feelings, dealing with them, has made my life so much different and it, it's actually caused me to be more bold it's caused me to be more courageous because I understand if I can get through this and I have people around me and God is for me then nobody can be against me but also um, we're taught a lot on how to live for Christ and how to um, you know face life and be joyful and everything but when it comes to grief it is something that is not talked about it's something that's kind of just yeah, swept under the rug, like, we'll be here for you, we'll pat you on the back, we'll hug you. But then after that, there's no support. And I really believe that not just this class, um, but, you know, a support group and a support network is so essential. But I will say that this group has truly changed my life, and I'm so thankful for it. So thank you, Gail, and keep doing the work that you're doing. So if you, if you know someone who maybe is struggling with grief, um, the uh, specific loss of spouse on Saturday and then the Wednesday nights at 6 uh, might be a, um, a, good, a good option for you. Actually, the, uh, the song that Chris is about to sing, as I've told you many times, uh, flowed directly out of uh, grief. Um, Horatio Spatafor, uh, 
lost uh, three of his daughters uh, in a, a, a ship that went down. His wife survived. Um, and uh, as he was going over to London where the funeral was going to be, you, you remember he asked the uh, captain, he said, when, when we get to the spot where the ship went down, where I lost my three daughters and my, and my wife was saved, he said, would you, have, would you tell me I'd like to be on deck? Um, so as he was on deck of that ship, right over the spot where he lost three of his daughters to a shipwreck, um, he wrote this song, It Is Well With My Soul, which to me always just makes it that much more powerful, that a song this great, this wonderful could come out of the depths of grief, and he could say, It Is, it is Well With My Soul. Uh, this is our uh, offertory. Uh, just a reminder, uh, thank you all for, uh, for being uh, generous. Uh, finance team, or actually executive board this week, we had, we had one of the best the best January that we have had. Uh, Gary went back. Gary went back and checked. And um, so, uh, people, people, you've been just amazing. Uh, I can't tell you what it does to the finance team and the staff when we know that there are people that are backing us. It helps us to kind of dream big. We don't have to say, "Oh, how are we going to pay the bills?" It's how, how are we going to reach out? What are we going to do now? So, thank you for that. If uh, if you're giving um, and you want to send your uh, offering in, great. You can go to the website and um, and do it online. Or many of you here, there's a uh, there's an offering plate in the narthex. So uh, let us now um, uh, continue to worship as Krista leads us.
Father, we thank you for the blessings that you have given to us. We thank you for the difficulties we've experienced through it all. We've seen your faithful hand. And because you are giving, we desire to be generous. Help us to continue on that path until we meet you face to face. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we uh, come to our prayer time, uh, as I said, we have a new ministry, and um, actually there'll be, a, there'll be a slide up on the screen for those of you uh, listening that will show you, uh, remind you of the number you can call, but we, it occurred to us that there are a lot of folks who may be watching who really don't need another sermon um, or even a worship service. They probably need someone to pray with them. So um, if you'll call that number, um, someone uh, will answer, and we will... Uh, we will connect you to uh, someone that will pray with you right now. So um, we're grateful for those that have stepped forward to, um, to make, that, uh, make that happen. Uh, also, if, you, if you're watching via uh, the Facebook or Zoom, uh, in a moment we're going to take communion. If, you, if you'd like to get some ele appropriate elements so that you can join us uh, at that time, that would be uh, great. Uh, last week I showed you uh, quite a few mug shots. I had one other that actually I had last week, but I forgot. This is from... Um, Rosemary and Dan Decker, who uh, are in California right now, and the story behind this one was they were both at Disney World, and they both went different directions, and they both found the, sa the same souvenir mug with the same theme, which I think this is Nightmare on, I don't Elm Street, I, so, the early service told, well, well, Nightmare Before Christmas, okay, <laughs> I don't know, I don't, anyway, they both, they both had, in different shops, in different places, had gotten the same theme uh, mug, and she thought that was kind of, you know, great minds think alike. So uh, if any of you, uh, if any of the rest of you have a mug shot, uh, a, a coffee cup or a, a tea, a tea cup that you use, and there's a story behind it, send it in and we'll, we'll show it. And then uh, this one was not one that you sent, but I just, someone sent me this on Facebook. I can do all things through a verse taken out of context, um, which um, Jonathan's big on the fact that I think when you preached on this, he said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And that's always used in the sense of I can, I can have a wonderful dreams, but Paul was saying I can survive through difficulty and trial and suffering uh, because, of, uh, because of what Christ has done. So I thought that was, thought that was good. Um, a number of folks to remember in prayer. Joe Stevens' mom, Nancy, is in uh, Camden Clark uh, looking at b blood pressure and some other uh, related things. Uh, Rick Ashwell, Jan and family are here. We've been praying all week. Um, there have been a few positive signs. He's been able to open his eyes. He's been able to respond to commands. Um, maybe getting a little more uh, able. Is he, can he do anything with his left side now? Um, uh, okay, I thought there's on the, just the left side. Okay, when the doctor came in yesterday, he, he wanted to reach out and shake his hand. And one time as Debbie was leaving, he called out to her. Or, or, so he's, he's aware and he's responding, and we just have to pray that uh, he continues to get better. Uh, another similar uh, prayer concern came in this week. Uh, Will Cosby's brother, Alan, had a massive stroke, very, uh, very young. And um, they removed two blood clots, and uh, he is, seems, seems to be recovering really well. And at this point, it's... Uh, they're praising God for the good news. Um, Elizabeth Johnson Cremians re recovering from breast cancer surgery. Uh, Maria Delgado still waiting for the biopsy results. Um, Lee Emmerich uh, in the hospital with COVID. Mike Hayden continues to struggle with weakness. Uh, Joe Hayes uh, at Cedar Grove through early March. Uh, Clara Howard recovering from COVID. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe Smith, Joe and Sherry Smith, uh, both involved in the school system here for years. Joe, Joe is in the ICU at Camden Clark uh, on a vent with uh, COVID. So uh, Sherry's asked us for special prayers for, uh, for him. Tammy Reynolds Kelly uh, went, uh, went home and then now is back at Camden Clark, still really struggling. They'll be doing C, um, CT scans and heart caths in the days to come. Uh, Tammy just says, I, I, need, I need your prayers. I, She's fought and fought, and uh, she has nothing left to give. And so she said, you all, you all need to be my strength now. You all need to pray me, pray me through. So I told her we, we, we would. Bernie Marshall is in Marietta Memorial. Phil McHenry in the early service, recovering well. Um, pray for our school leaders. Pray for our support groups. Pray for medical care personnel. Um, Dave and Peggy Phillips, granddaughter, Ellie Ferguson, surgery. 
uh, assist on ovary surgery Wednesday, uh, this Wednesday. They specifically ask us to pray for Ellie. And then uh, our sympathy goes out to the family and friends of Phyllis Bennett, who passed away. Uh, Phyllis, a very special part of our church, and uh, uh, I think the family at this point is going to wait for a better time to get together. Um, so we will have a celebration of her life then. Uh, for uh, family and friends of Tom McCarthy, uh, Deanie Kendall, who is here, uh, we offer our sympathy to Deanie at the passing of her sister, Eloise Glenn Andrews. So um, those of you that are able, to please tell Deanie, offer your condolences. And then uh, Missy Barker, Kim Jackson's aunt, passed, uh, um, uh, family and friends of Missy Barker, her, her husband, Tom Barker, uh, passed, uh, passed away. Um, and then uh, John Doan, I, I don't know, John Doan attended here uh, for quite a few years, hadn't been here in the last couple of years, but was a part of our church and he passed away. So a number of folks that, are, that have been grieving. Um, any, other, any other additions or corrections? Yeah. Keith uh, would like us to pray for his sister and her husband as they separated this week, and um, he's praying that they could, could, could find a way to reconcile. Um, a real praise for the marriage course uh, in, in, in for five years now. It's brought couples to, together to face issues. Uh, interesting option this year online. Even though we're maxed out in person, uh, we, still could, we still could have a few people who could, uh, could do it online. So if, that, if that's you watching, God may be saying to you, call the church and we'll get you set up with a workbook and uh, to be part of that. All right, uh, I, chose, uh, I ch chose a song to sing before the prayer that I think relates to this idea of those who hunger and thirst will be filled. And so we'll sing together, fill my cup, and then I'm going to have Jonathan uh, offer the pastoral prayer. Like a woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Turn to the Lord in prayer. I would ask that everyone here let your thoughts settle on two or three names that have been mentioned or that have not been mentioned, and um, let those names uh, burden your heart as we pray together. Let's pray. Father, there is so much brokenness around us. Uh, Lord, the, the world is broken, our, our systems are broken, and so often our relationships are broken, our hearts are broken and father we can so easily be overwhelmed by all the brokenness and Lord, there are needs that we don't know how to meet there are wounds that we don't know how to heal or how to bind up and so father for those needs and for those wounds and for so much more Lord, we are driven to our knees in faith and in prayer that you are the god of healing and you are the god who still heals and who still brings about beauty from tragic situations Lord, we are grateful for the, um, the, uh, the, the times where, where you come through and show yourself to be true in power and in might and through miracles and signs. Father, we're grateful for those times, and yet we know that our faith does not depend on those times. Um, our faith is dependent on your promises. We know that no matter how you choose to answer these requests, Lord, that ultimately you will be glorified. Ultimately, your kingdom will be furthered. Ultimately, it will be for our good 
So, Father, we are grateful. We look to you in faith. Uh, we look to you in desperation. Uh, and, Father, we continue to seek ways to be your hands and your voice, uh, to be your presence, Lord, for each of these names on this list, for every name that has been mentioned out loud, we pray your presence to be with them. We pray your spirit to be near their hearts. Again, Lord, I ask that our hearts would break as their hearts break. Lord, uh, fill those needs as only you can, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. The uh, last of the Ten Commandments is uh, thou shalt not uh, covet, which means uh, the, the final command was to check your appetite. What are you, what are you hungry for? What are you thirsty for? I read, uh, I read the testimony of a, of a lady in a, in a book I was reading, and uh, I, it, was a, she, it was a long testimony, but I'll just summarize it briefly. For, for a long time, she coveted drugs, and her life was filled with a desire for, uh, for drugs, and she was enslaved by that. She was brought out of that through rehab, and then uh, to fill the void, she, uh, she started smoking. And uh, for a while, you know, her, she coveted uh, smoking and, and the, the calmness that uh, smoking brought to her life. But then the doctor, of course, told her, uh, you're not, that's, you know, it's not helping you. So she, uh, she finally kind of broke uh, her, uh, her hunger for, for nicotine. And then she said, I began to covet the things around me. And I began to use my credit card. And I began to buy things, uh, the things that I could buy online as well as other things. And she filled her world with stuff. And uh, she got into a huge amount of debt from desiring all these things. And finally, the Lord kind of spoke to her and said, you know, you need to be hungry for me and not for other things. And so she began a multi-year process of giving away or selling the things that she had purchased that she couldn't afford. And she said, as I gave away or got rid of all these items, it's as though I was kind of clearing this path around me and all of the things that I had coveted suddenly had no power over me and I began to desire uh, God more and, and more. So I thought, that's, boy, we can, there's so many things that we, we, can, we can have an appetite for that bring us down. I'll tell you right now, I covet uh, football. I, I, today's a big day. Um, I just hope the officials, uh, John, I just hope the officials are as good as you. Uh, John, uh, John Alfred, who uh, really, uh, all, the people, all the games that you've officiated, I, all the coaches and players have, have, have expressed their utmost uh, appreciation for you. Yeah, and your calls. Yeah. <laughs> You've uh, you got to focus your anger on somebody, and the officials get it. You, you always carry what? An extra flag for coaches, yeah. An extra flag to let them have it. But uh, today's a big day. I, I love uh, my family, uh, football. We, we gathered around the television and watched. Uh, I remember one of my youngest memories is my dad with a, with a boxer named Kip. Uh, watching uh, the Green Bay Packers in, uh, in the Super Bowl back in the 1960s. It's one of, a fond memory. So um, Super Bowl Sunday it brings together a lot of what is very much American. It's big, it's glitzy, uh, it's, you know, it's exciting. And yet uh, I always think that America's into the Super Bowl. Jesus was into the water bowl. <laughs> you remember uh, he took the basin and a water bowl and he bent down and he... Uh, served his disciples and washed their feet. So although we crave the exciting things, and I'll be watching the game today, and being from Missouri, I have to root for the, I have to root for the Chiefs, but, uh, or, or I'm rooting against Tom Brady, <laughs> either, either one. But uh, what, are you, what are you hungry for? Another thing I covet are the cinnamon rolls at J.R. Donuts. Full of fat, sugar, lightly glazed dough with cinnamon swirled in, uh, a year's worth of calories, a heart attack in a bag that I love. And I have a hard time driving by uh, JR. Uh, when I get uh, those cinnamon rolls, especially if they're still a bit warm and you can smell, you can smell them kind of wafting out of the bag. Uh, even though Mona has told me I have a very nutritious meal for you at home, I cannot help but to kind of, un if with one hand, you can, you can steer with one hand and you can open up the bag with the other and slip your hand in. And it takes kind of a quick motion, but you can pull that outer edge of the cinnamon roll. And uh, sometimes that cinnamon roll hasn't even made it home because uh, you, you take one bite and you need another. 
Deep theological question. Are there going to be deep fat friars in heaven? Eileen would say no. I'm going with yes because you get some of your best food deep fat fried like those cinnamon like those cinnamon rolls. Well, cinnamon rolls may not be your weakness. It could be chocolate or junk food. I'm thankful that on Wednesday nights, uh, Jewel always makes a wonderful meal for us. And there's a, right now a small group of us that gather, but I hope more of you, as, you're, as you feel safe, will come out and, uh, and join us. I grew up with my mom always saying to me, don't spoil your appetite. Did anybody else? Anybody else? Don't spoil your appetite. What did that mean? She was saying, don't snack here. Don't graze over here. Don't be eating all the potato chips and the other things because I have a meal for you that is good. And if you eat all the things that are bad, you're going to not have an appetite for the good things. And by the way, if you eat a lot of junk food, you end up needing to go on a diet. And a diet is that painful process of evaluating and questioning everything you naturally crave and hunger for. It's redirecting our hunger toward healthy food and drink. Uh, in this beatitude, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Jesus is calling us to check our appetites, our cravings, because they speak to the condition of our heart. One more uh, confession, and that is uh, my, dad got me, <laughs> my dad got me started on this. I didn't know he was doing this. My dad buys a lottery ticket every, every day. But I told him, I said, Dad, when the, when the lottery gets above five hundred million I'll go ahead and buy one and so this was on my this was staring at me on my desk and just a reminder <laughs> just a reminder that yes I still covet a, a 500 million dollar payout even though your chances of winning that are one in two trillion uh, still there's this sense that somehow if I hit it okay all of you are going to be in great shape I don't care I'm paying off Jonathan and Maria's student loans I'm I'm going to give I'm going to give money to the capital campaign and if you need something I'm there for you <laughs> uh, and uh, I would I'd keep a little bit in my in my savings account to cover me and then I'd spend the rest of my days giving that money uh, away to people that I know that could need it so yeah I still have I still covet maybe hitting the lottery even though I play uh, once or twice uh, a year. What are you hungry for? Is it a new car? Is it a house? Is it a raise? Is it a promotion? Is it an amazing vacation or a wonderful relationship? None of these are bad in themselves, but if they become your focus and you begin to focus on the things of earth, you can lose your hunger for, your, for heaven and for your heavenly Father. So what are you hungry for today? I want you to see this uh, verse uh, before you, and I want you to say these words from Philippians 3 with me. I want to know Christ, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, so somehow attaining to the resurrection of the dead. What was Paul hungry for? He said, I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of his resurrection. I'm willing to follow him into suffering so that I might one day see him face to face. So we're, we're in a study on the Beatitudes, and we've, we've looked at three of them. The first three Beatitudes really focused on what it meant to empty yourself before God. Poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek. So the emptiness, blessed are those who embrace their poverty. Blessed are those who mourn their brokenness. Blessed are those who meekly seek to surrender to God. And so after three beatitudes of emptying ourselves before God, the, the, the fourth beatitude says, God, I'm empty. W will you fill me? Fill me with yourself. I hunger and thirst for you. And so as I, as I was reading this and commentaries in the Greek, there were three things about this beatitude that jumped out. So uh, Matthew 5, 6, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. By the way, the message translates... Uh, you're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink and the best meal you'll, you'll ever eat. That's from the, the message. And so first of all, the hunger described here, the word for hunger and thirst, it's desperate, not uh, casual. Uh, this is not sort of a mid-afternoon uh, stomach rumble. This is I'm going to die kind of hunger. Few in America have experienced real 
Uh, we haven't experienced, most of us, famine. We, most of us have not experienced the kind of hunger that this verse is talking about. One of the nice things about going on a mission trip, which I'm, we're talking about one to the Dominican, by the way, you be thinking uh, about that. But I've, I've gone to Haiti two times, and I've gone to the Dominican twice. And uh, in each place, especially in Haiti, I'll never forget, uh, we were worshiping at a church in the north uh, uh, called Fort Liberté. And everybody around us were poor and, and wondered how they were going to get food that day. And we were praying the Lord's Prayer. And I'll never forget, we prayed, give us this day our daily bread. And the Lord just hit me right there in that church in Haiti. And I thought to myself, that's never been a real prayer for me. I've never wondered where I was going to get bread or food or even some of the basic things. And then I looked around me in that sanctuary and I thought every, everybody in this room, it was a real prayer for them because they didn't know where they were going to get bread that day. And of course, the, 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 the ministry we were a part of uh, not only fixed an orphanage but also provided food. So we were there to, to address that. But um, how much do you want of God? Do you want God as much as a starving man wants food, as much as, as a man dying of thirst wants water? Um, so we don't come to God full and righteous. We come to God empty, and then we say, God, fill me. Uh, an old author, uh, an old commentary had a story by Charles Allen about a young seeker who went to uh, see a holy man in India, and he, 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 wanted, he said he wanted to, to know God better. And the, the holy man took him down a path down into, uh, toward the river. And they, they, they waded out into the river. And the, the, the young man thought he was going to be involved in some kind of ritual purification process. And as they got deeper into the river, the holy man took the head of the young seeker and he shoved it under the water and held it there. And the, finally the young seeker, uh, thinking that the guy was crazy, wrenched himself loose and came up heaving for air. And the holy man looked at him and said, when you were underwater there for a moment, what did you want most? And the, the young man said, <laughs> breathing heavily, air. And the holy man said, when you want God as much as you just wanted air, you'll find him. And I thought, oh, that's, that's a good story, isn't it? We sometimes come to God, but we're not really that hungry. Uh, and this passage says you need to want God in a desperate sort of way. The prodigal son took the money, ran to the city, satisfied his every desire, and then found that he was empty. And Barclay has this great quote. He said, to be hungry is not enough. I must be starving to know what is in God's heart for me. When the prodigal son was just hungry, he ate the pig's food. When he was starving, he got, a, he got up and went home to his father. That's a keeper. Think about that. When the prodigal son was hungry, he ate the pig's food. When he was starving, he got up and went home to be with his father. Um, and that's true of us, too. As David says in Psalm 63, You, God, I earnestly seek for you. I thirst for you. I long for you as in a dry and parched land where there is no water. So first of all, the hunger is desperate. Secondly, the righteousness is desired is total and complete. Um, by the way, righteousness is simply having a right relationship with God. As I'm right with God in my heart and I know his love here, that love flows out of me into the lives of other people. John Stott said, biblical righteousness has three aspects, legal, moral, and social. Legal righteousness is that we are justified before God through faith. Moral righteousness involves good conduct and godly character that flows motivated by a spirit-filled heart. And then social righteousness means that we are honest with others in relationships and we seek justice for every person and freedom for anyone who is oppressed. So blessed are those who refuse to settle for just part of God but want all of God. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. In my uh, weekly email, I quoted this. If you, if you saw that, you've, you've seen this. Um, we should never be like the person who said, I would like to buy $3 worth of God, please. Not enough to explode my soul or disturb my sleep, but just enough to equal a cup of warm milk or a snooze in the sunshine. I don't want enough of God to make me love a black man or help a street person. I want ecstasy, not transformation. I want the warmth of the womb, not new birth. I want a pound of the eternal in a paper sack. I'd like $3 worth of God, please. Mm. You want $3 worth of God or do you want all of God? 
I sometimes worry that I treat God like a waiter. I call him when I need him. I expect good service, and if he takes care of my needs, I'll give him a tip. And I feel sometimes like we treat the Bible like a menu. And a menu is what you look at and you say, well, I like this and I like this and I'll order that and that. But the Bible is the totality of every good thing that God wants us to have. And so this beatitude would be like someone going into a restaurant where all the food is good and they look at the waiter and said, I want all of it. I want all of it. And I will come back every day until I have tried every dish in this amazing restaurant because every one of them is wonderful and I want to taste it all. And so today, when we come to God, we need to say, God, I love you. And every day, I'm going to order something from your word. Every day, I'm going to claim a promise. Every day, I'm going to memorize a passage until I'm filled up with you from top to bottom. God, I want all of your righteousness, not just part of it. I want to know Christ. And so the hunger is desperate. The righteousness that, that is, is required, is desired, is total. And then the, the, the filling is full and over. Flowing. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. It's like David says in the 23rd Psalm, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup runneth over, overflows. God, fill me, fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Isn't that what Jesus said to the woman at the well in John 4 when it says, uh, he said to her, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water that I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up into eternal life. What Jesus promised the Samaritan woman is I'm going to come inside of you and th this water of life is going to well up and overflow out, in, out of your life into the lives of others. God, may, may you so fill me that I'm filled up to overflowing. So the hunger is desperate. The righteousness is total, and the filling is filled to overflowing. It's very interesting that in the, in the chapter just before this, in chapter 4, in Matthew 4, it says that Jesus fasted for 40 days, and then he goes into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan. And what was Satan's first temptation? Jesus, 40 days fasting, was very hungry. Satan looks at him and says, if you are God... Turn, turn these stones into bread. He goes right at his hunger and says, if you have the power to, to make food for yourself right now, and then you can take that food and feed other people, and they'll follow you because you'll be the kind of Messiah who gives them what they want. And Jesus said, um, oh, it's from Deuteronomy. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He quotes, he quotes scripture right back to Satan. Man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So Jesus shows us what it is to be hungry, to be tempted in that hunger, and then to focus his, his focus back upon God. The best passage that I could find that shows how we deal with this hungering and thirsting is Luke 24, the uh, two men on the road to Emmaus, uh, when the risen Lord comes and walks alongside them. They were hungry and they were thirsty for God. And um, this would be a whole sermon in itself, but as I looked at it, I thought, I've got to flow, at least flow this out to you. I think I have a slide that I put in just this morning, and it kind of goes off to the side. But observations from the MA story. As they were hungering and seeking God, number one, they weren't alone. There were two men walking together, asking their questions. There was someone holding this other person accountable. There was someone there for emotional support and prayer support. And so over and over again, you'll notice that at Emmanuel, we're trying to get you to get a prayer partner. We're asking you to maybe be part of a new Zoom ministry where if you have an interest, you might Zoom in or you might facilitate one of these so that we can make some connections so that we can, we can hunger and thirst uh, together. Um, Jan Ashwell was good, uh, was good to write up the, the history of the Crusader class. And I think it started back in 1965 in the home of Hal Parker and uh, Jan and... Um, Oh, there were some wonderful people there at the, at the beginning. Uh, Jan Lee Ashwell, uh, Pat and Charlie Riggs, Jim and Ann Davis and Betty Ball started the class. And next year in 66, they gave it the name, uh, the Crusaders class. President Bill Ott, uh, uh, officers were Bill Ott, President, Ann Davis, Vice President, Betty Ball, Secretary. Um, 
Jan, you mentioned early on you didn't have money, but, but you had time. And they, and they served. And so the, the Crusaders served in every area of ministry. They were involved at Parchment Valley. They helped with the Salvation Army. They did Red Cross uh, blood drives. They started Tuesday Fellowship. And she lists all the people that were teachers through the years, Bob Butler, Gary Beal, um, Gary Prater, Lyndall Jones, John Keck, uh, myself, Bob Byers, and Ken Barton all were uh, able to teach. But that class is an example of people, the Crusader class is an example of people who came together over time, loved one another, served one another, served the church, and Jen will be the first to tell you that your life is better and enriched because of a class like the Crusaders. Now, they've decided to not continue to meet, but what a wonderful run. What a wonderful run from 65 until just this last year. And now they're kind of looking at other classes or maybe starting uh, a new one. But what a great example of walking side by side. You raised your kids together, you know? And uh, did you get some good advice when Kathy was, uh, when Kathy, you know, was causing your problems? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's yeah, she's here. <laughs> I, Mona's going to get on me because I, I point people out and ask questions. Uh, they weren't alone. Number. Uh, uh, by, by the way, by the way, when COVID fades, those of you that are watching on Facebook and those of you on Zoom, uh, I read an article this week that said when the, everybody's vaccinated, all churches are going to be down 25 percent because people are so used to watching online that they're not going to come back. And I am asking you and begging you that even though it's wonderful to watch online, there is something powerful about coming together in person. And I want you to pray now that when that time comes, that you will make the effort uh, to be here. Because when we are here together, the spirit, there's a feeling of the Spirit moving among us, and the choir is going to be coming back, we hope, sometime. And we're going to hear beautiful anthems and beautiful music. And there's something about that being live and in person that you just can't get fully uh, online. So they weren't alone. Number two, they were hungry and they were searching. And I get this simply from the fact that they were asking questions and they were, they were hungry. You, you sense the intensity of their discussions and the depth of their emotion. And then I notice that when, when, you're, when we're hungry, Jesus appears. As they walked, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came alongside them. When you are hungry and when you are calling out to God, and you may not, they may, you may not even know how Jesus comes to you, but Jesus is going to come to you through an angel or another person or a new insight. Jesus will come to you. When you are hungry, Jesus will find his way to you. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. It's a great saying that I've always thought. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And so when you're hungry, Jesus appears. Years ago, I was running the rescue mission in Clarksburg, and there was a young man named James uh, he was staying there for a time. He came to a Bible study on the, so on the soils, the parable of the soils, I remembered. And he said to me, I'm close to this God stuff because my life's been painful. And he said, if I'm anywhere, I'm in the weeds, and I don't see myself getting out. And I remember I looked at him, and I said, just open your life a little. Just crack the door of your heart, and the wind of the Spirit will make his way in. And I'll never forget, the next day, James came to the Bible study again, and he had been working at Burger King, and he's back making Whopper or whatever in the kitchen. And because of the Bible study, he prayed a prayer. He said, God, are you real? Uh, and he's sharing this with us. And as he prayed that prayer, he dropped something on the ground. And he reached down to pick up whatever it was. And he looked. And under the serving table was a white card. He reached down and he picked up that white card. And written on a business card sized white card were the, was in all caps the word yes. So he's praying, God, are you real? <laughs> Drop something, bends down, card down there, and, and, and the answer was yes. And so James, that day, said, I want to give my life to the Lord. Uh, and um, he said, do you think there'll be, I, we had talked about how when one sinner repents, all heaven rejoices. And James said, do you think they're rejoicing in heaven? And I said, one word, yes. <laughs> I said, the, the, answer, the answer is yes. I'll never forget, he said, I, he said, I think I've cut my way out of the weeds into the good soil. Well, you, those, those are words. He said, I cut my way out of the weeds and I found myself into the good soil. Jer Jeremiah says, you'll seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with all your heart. And so they, were, they weren't alone. They were hungry and searching. Uh, when you're hungry, Jesus appears. And then Jesus satisfied their, their hunger by showing them 
what the Bible said. This is Luke 24. And it says there, beginning with Moses and the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And I just want to give you one final challenge for the, 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 the Bible project through the Bible. Uh, I've been asking you to, con to, to join me. Uh, we're going through the Old Testament right now. Uh, if you go to BibleProject.com, you put your email in there. They'll send you every week the readings. Uh, you get old, right now we're in the Old Testament and the Psalms. And then there's a video that will go alongside of these as well as some weekly Bible studies. I have a testimony from, um, uh, from Lynn Palmer. She said, I found the Bible Project to be very helpful in several ways. One, I like structure. <clears throat> Two, I never considered trying to read the Bible all the way through. <clears throat> but reading a few chapters at a time seems doable. Three, I'm a visual learner, and I just love the animation from the videos that, that brings clarification. Also, they recap for you, uh, and that's a good study habit. Thank you for guiding me to this. I am reading the Bible uh, through the Bible for the first time. And so Jesus, as they were seeking, takes them to Scripture, and I'm wondering, how are you getting into Scripture? Consider the, the, that Bible project. Um, as, as a way to fill your life up with, uh, with things that are good. These two men were facing uh, a spiritual crisis, and when we go through a crisis, that can be the time that we maybe seek God in a new way. So whenever uh, I'm facing or dealing with someone that's going through a nightmare or going through a crisis, we are dealing with the physical, emotional fallout, but I'm very much aware that they may be open to God in a new way for the first time, and I'm praying the whole time, God, give me the words to say. Recent survey found that Americans were three times more likely to report that their religious faith had become stronger over the last year. Many, others, many other countries, that faith has gone down. In America, this last year has forced us to the end of ourselves, and we're calling out, and people apparently are calling out to God more right now. And so that, by the way, people, that's, a, that, that's an opportunity for us. Your friends, your neighbors have just been through the, a year of hell. And they may not tell you, but they're wondering, is anything, does anything matter? Do I have a purpose in life? Does, is God there? Is God real? Someone texted me a while ago and said, you know what, I, I don't know. She said, I think God is angry at me. I don't know if God loves me. And I was able to text back and said, oh, God's not angry with you. He, said, I see he sent his son for you to show that he loves you. And if you call out to him right now, you can experience that love in your heart. That's where people are. That's where your friends are. And you might have the opportunity to help them as they hunger for God. The prodigal son didn't deal with his deepest spiritual needs until he faced a personal crisis. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And who, whoever believes in me will never thirst. Let us pray. Father, uh, we are thankful to you. And we think of Psalm 34. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the person who finds refuge in you. Father, your own, your own son said in Revelation 3, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will open the door, I will come in and we will share a wonderful meal together. Father, you desire to come into our heart, and when you do, you give us a taste of that great banquet that we will one day experience in heaven. Father, that story that Jesus told, the, the banquet was prepared and the invited guests were too busy. They had too much going on in their life, and so you went out into the streets and you found people that were poor and hungry, and you invited them in. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, and they will be filled overflowing. We pray that'd be true of us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, if you desire prayer, um, again, we have a new ministry, and uh, there's a slide that's coming onto the screen there for Facebook uh, that to, to show you the number, 485-5171. If there's something in your life, if you're seeking, if you're searching, uh, call that number, 485-5171, um, and someone will uh, someone will pray with you if you're here in the sanctuary and you'd like someone to pray with you John or myself uh, would would love to pray with you and we'll be available in the parlor um, to to pray with you after after this uh, let's stand and we're going to sing together two verses
of, uh, of our, the hymn before we take communion. Before we take of the bread and the cup, and if you're watching online, if you'd find uh, something to, to join with us, I just wanted to give you a brief story about uh, the scripture we're about to read together. Uh, multiple times in my ministry here, um, Phyllis Bennett would make an appointment, and she would ask to come in and talk with me. One of the last times she came in and, and to speak with me, she said, Pastor, every time we take communion, we always do the Apostles' Creed. And she said, I'm not against the Apostles' Creed. But she said, is it possible we could just read a scripture? She said, I think it'd be, I think it'd be very appropriate if we read a scripture together before communion. And she said, I think Philippians 2 is wonderful. And if we read that, it would be a wonderful lead-in to communion. So in this week when Phyllis passed, I'm reminded of the fact that whenever she had something she needed to talk about, she made an appointment, she came in, and she never just told me about the problem. She always had some positive thing that we could do to address it. So in honor of this wonderful life and to prepare our, our self for communion, let's read, read these words that Phyllis suggested together. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen and amen. As, you, as we prepare to take communion, um, please... Take, take off the top layer uh, for those of you in the sanctuary so that you, you have the, uh, the bread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. And Psalm 107 says, For God satisfies the thirsty, and he fills the hungry with good things. I give you the bread. And then, for those of you who have these individual units, you'll need to pull the foil back so that you can get to the cup. Those of you at home, if you have your own cup. And I'd like to read to you again from Psalm 63. O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I give you the cup. Father, we thank you for this time. 
fill us with yourself and give us a hunger, a deep hunger for you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and we'll sing together, Bless Be the Tithe.